All that was left to do on the soldiers was adding some pigment to the lower portion of the legs and the boots and a little dark grey pigment to the faces, the light growth of a beard. The last step will be painting the uniform and hand palms with flat clear after I glued their weapons into place. The wooden parts of the rifles and the brand gun got a base coat of Tamiya flat earth. Then burnt and raw sienna oils were applied in a wet and wet technique. All metal parts were painted in Tamiya German grey. After the paint was dry I applied a wash of burnt umber and mineral spirit. The last steps on the metal parts for the dry brush of Tamiya metal grey mixed with German grey in equal parts. I painted the gun straps with Tamiya khaki drab and highlighted them with khaki. Then they were glued in place with TA glue. That was a bit fiddly. I made the mistake to assemble the soldiers without using the weapon to make sure for a proper fit. Well, in the end it worked quite nicely. Believe it or not, I like these Tamiya figures. The uniform detail is beautiful and the facial expressions are more than just okay for the scale. Well, I built and painted huge piles of old Tamiya figures and they were terrible. The boots didn't even have heels back then. Compared to those, the newer figures are wonderful. The last coat of flat clear was applied and now the lads are ready for marching. Next stop, some Normandy village. I finished the <coughs> greenery with pastels, pin washes and the last highlighting, but hang on, first things first. The pastels I used were a mixture of several greens plus dark grey. The pin washes were yellow ochre for the ivy and burnt umber to outline the ivy. Highlighting was done with a mix of Tamiya dark green with white and last with Tamiya buff. The parsley changed its appearance because it absorbed the diluted white glue, but to me it still looks good enough though. Anyway, I learned something for future use while weathering the ivy. Spray delicate dried herbs first with flat clear, that will keep them in their original shape. The backside of the wall needed some detailing too. I made three hooks from 0.5mm copper wire and glued them into matching holes I drilled into the wall. I primed them with light grey enamel. Then I painted them with the mere red brown. I also painted some rust streaks underneath the hooks with the same color. Then I dry brushed the hooks with Tamiya metallic grey. To finish this side of the wall I attached my scratch belt rake and a rope. Here are some pieces I had in my special spare box, the one with the finished parts. The bucket and the oil drum will be standing behind the wall. I haven't decided about the dog yet, he might be with the soldiers or with the civilians, I'll sort this out later. I sketched the wrought iron part on 1mm plastic card, then I cut it out along straight lines using my exacto knife. I filed and sanded the part till I got the shape I wanted. Now it was smooth and could be used as template for the second part. I cut 0.5mm copper wire to 3cm length. Three threads were necessary. Then I cut strips of wood, each 1mm wide. Altogether I needed 8 strips. I glued the side parts and the wire with CAE glue. Then I added the wooden strips again using CAE glue. After the glue had cured I primed the bench with a light grey color. The wooden parts were painted in Tamiya dark green. I chipped the strips with a sponge using Tamiya buff. I dry brushed the wood with Revell Enamel Matte 65. For the second dry brushing I used Humbro Enamel Matte 155. The iron parts were painted black and then dry brushed with Tamiya Metallic Grey. Some light rust was applied with Tamiya Red Brown. Mm -hmm. 
not much to report here. I did some dry fitting with the bench and I built a part from plastic card which is the counterpart of the lock on the left door. Look carefully please and you'll see what I mean. Some thoughts on the mini art kit French Civilians. These were the first figures by mini art I built. I only heard one comment on them in general and that comment wasn't too enthusiastic to say the least. Of course I can only judge the quality from the two figures you see here. What I didn't like at all were the mold seams along forehead, nose, mouth and chin. Sure, there's no way avoiding mold seams, but from the two ways to place them, this is the more unfortunate one. The general fit could have been better and to build the bread basket wasn't too easy, but, and that's a very big but, the facial expressions meet the box art precisely. That doesn't happen too often. Another big plus is the texture of the cloth. You can't see it here, but it'll all show up during the process of dry brushing. Now for the master box figures. I built two from that company before these four for this dio. One thing's for sure. The detail of the faces is very crisp while the mini art figures are softer. I still like their faces better for the expression. Most modelers seem to like MB figures best when it comes to plastic, but I had fit issues with all of them. On the woman's figure it wasn't possible to clean the seam where head and hair are glued together without destroying the detail. That's why I added the ribbon to her hair. Okay, I like it, but I would have been fine without the necessity of doing this. The girl's arms come in one piece. I needed pure force to glue them in place. I don't know if that's the usual way they are made or if they were bent. Anyway, there was no way of using clamps or tape. I had to hold them tightly for about 20 minutes. That's how long it took the glue to cure enough to hold body and arms together. That was really annoying. Up to now I'm all but a fan of MB figures. Really up to now, because I will probably change my opinion. Painting them will be nice for the fantastic detail. I should definitely try to give my very best. I wanted to turn a city woman into a young farmer's wife, so I removed the handbag. In order to change her pose I had to cut off her right hand. Then I added straps for an apron using paper and CA glue. Working on the straps was a little fiddly on the back side, but I'm very satisfied with the result. The apron was made from paper too, just the stuff you use for your printer. Using CA glue to attach it makes it rigid and easy to paint. I lost the original hand, so another amputation took place on my bench. Before that I had to sand off the sleeve. The woman shall be carrying a bunch of flowers for the soldiers. I had to change the hand's position for that purpose. As I said before, I had to add a ribbon to her hair to save the detail. To me it looks good. Hope it still does after painting. I didn't like the snotty look of the girl's pose at all. To break it I added a piece of tissue. This will be La Tricolore. I love the old man's pose, but I wanted to change it a little by adding a piece of tissue. That's grandpa's hanky now. And here's the whole bunch. Will you do this? For me, we oui, we oui, Marie, then I'll do that for you. I love your eyes, they make me feel so foony. You'll drive me loony, you're teasing me. Why can't we poly?